الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن والاه. My brothers and sisters in Islam, السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. So our last class, we actually began by speaking about sincerity. And the story we used to talk about sincerity is the beginning of the creation of human beings. And the fight between the king of the devils, Iblis, and Adam, alayhi salam, our father. And the debate or the conversation that happened between Iblis, alayhi la'natullah, and Allah, jalla jalalu. Let me point out, and so just in case, Iblis is not a human being. Iblis is not an angel. Iblis is one of the jinns. And Allah tells us in the Quran that He created the angels out of light and the jinns out of the flame of fire, and the humans out of a type of clay in the earth. You can call it soil if you like. Sometimes it's referred to as soil or clay mixed, but we are created from the earth itself. And the angels are from Noor, and the jinns are from Marijim Minnar, the flame or the sparks that separate themselves from a flame of fire, if you've ever seen it before. So the jinns are a life form which Allah created, and Iblis is nothing with power like God. You know how you're watching the movies sometimes when they want to represent Satan, they make the devil look like he's got godly powers and that God and him are in a, at a war and they, they show God as losing sometimes and Iblis as winning as though, and they say that Iblis is the owner of the fire. He's the one who punishes people in the fire. He's the, this is no more than fallacy and false and imagination. It's further from the truth than you can ever imagine. It's made up imagination by people who wrote imaginary children's book in the beginning. Iblis is a creation of Allah. Iblis is a jinn. Iblis is the king of the devils. That's the only difference. Iblis used to worship God. Iblis is meant to be one of the servants of God, like us. He has no particular power except the power which God gives him, like any other human being or angel. The jinns are another life form which worship Allah or, or choose not to worship. They have been created for a similar reason the human beings have been created because Allah says in the Quran, I have not, Allah says, I have not created the jinns and the human beings to serve any other purpose on earth, us, what, what, what are we here for? Not, we have been, been created to serve anything else except the obedience of God, the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah then says, I don't want them to provide me with any type of nourishment or provision so, so that people can eliminate that doubt from their head. This is not what Allah is after. So the jinns are created the same service that the humans have to give. And they also receive the messengers to them as they've received them to us, as we receive them. Muhammad وسلم, came to the humans and the jinns. Iblis, as we said last week, he refused and rejected to obey one command of Allah. That particular command is the command that tested that one problem that existed in the heart of Iblis. And Allah does things for a pl with a plan. We cannot even begin to comprehend the complexity of Allah's plans and how they fit, how they fit with man's choices, how perfectly they fit. In a way, in a way where Allah does not interfere with our choices and at the same time fulfills His will. Allah is all knower of everything, all able to do anything He wants. Therefore, we do not question the qadr, the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His knowledge because we are unable to know the answers and comprehend them. We barely have information about our own personal self. 
So Iblis disobeyed Allah by saying, I don't want to prostrate to Adam alayhi salam. And the reason that made him disobey Allah is the problem, not the act itself. The act itself is a sin. But the bigger problem was the reason why he did that sin. Which gives us a lesson here. Some people, some Muslims may do a minor sin. Something that's really nothing major that has a terrible punishment uh, promised in the Quran or the Sunnah. But on certain occasions, a minor sin, a small thing can turn into a major sin. Depending on the reason why you did it, the intention. Iblis's intention of not prostrating himself down to Adam, السلام, disobeying God's command, was nothing other than what Allah describes as kibr, 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 proudiness, haughtiness, seeing himself above, other, above the truth and above others, above the truth and above others, without any just, justification. And kibr, we said last class, is the opposite of sincerity. Sincerity is the opposite of kibr. And one of the instigators of kibr is jealousy. Jealousy. Let me now recap the meaning of kibr and the meaning of jealousy. Kibr, proudiness, haughtiness. They asked the Messenger of Allah وسلم, when he said, No one will enter paradise with a grain's worth of kibr in their heart. And they said, Ya Rasulullah, what is kibr? And he replied, Huwa batarul haqq wa ghamtun nas. It is the refusal or the rejection of the truth. The truth of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what he has revealed to us. And ghamtun nas, degrading others to put yourself on top unjustifiably. Degrading others, reputation, whatever they are, in order for you to stand out on top and to see yourself better as though you have more rights than others as that you are better than others because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran فَلَا تُزَكُّوا أَنفُسَكُمْ هُوَ أَعْلَمُ بِمَنِ اتَّقَى for example Allah says never attempt to praise yourselves in that you are pious to God in righteousness it is He, Allah, who truly knows who is pious and who is not. So even in that, when the Allah, this is part of kibr, to look at another person and say, my prayer is accepted more than your prayer. I got more rewards for my prayer than yours. My heart with Allah is bigger than yours. Allah loves me more than you. I deserve more paradise and more rewards than you. A Muslim doesn't say that and he's never said that. No alim has ever said that. No companions of Prophet has ever said that. This is not the teachings of our messenger or our prophets. Peace be upon them all. And this is part of kibir actually. We we'll ask Allah to save us from that. So a person was, I was asked once, sometimes a person gets a thought, a feeling that I'm better than someone. I feel I'm better than someone. Is that what it means that an atom's worth of kibr in my heart, I will not enter paradise because of that? No, that's not the answer. This is explained in one of the hadiths where the companions of the Prophet ﷺ said to Rasulullah ﷺ the same thing. They asked him, Ya Rasulullah, there are things that occur in our mind that in reality, if we were to tell you what they are, we would rather be burnt. Burnt alive than to tell you what they are. We, we don't like these thoughts, but they do come to us naturally, these feelings, these thoughts. He said, Really? Really, you found this in you? They said, Yes. And Prophet became happy. He said, Alhamdulillah, الذي رد كيد الشيطان إلى الوسوسة. Alhamdulillah, praise be to Allah who has returned the power who has reduced the power of the shaitan to only mere whispering. So sometimes, you may think these thoughts, do not act upon them. If you act upon them, then you have confirmed them. But if you don't act upon them, then they are mere whispers from the shaitan, a weakness from him trying to delude you. 
So that's inshallah the answer to that. Acting upon the thoughts and the feelings inside the human self is what makes you get the sin or the deed. But if you intend to do something good, however, and you change your mind, you still get a reward. This is out of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Iblis did that. It was the kibr that's in his heart. And it was a plan from Allah that he made Adam alayhi salam at the same time with many other plans to fit right where it, needs, where it needs to fit. And one of the plans was to expose Iblis himself. Where was Iblis at that time? Who can answer? Who remembers from the last class? What was Iblis's position before he disobeyed Allah? He, wa he had a role amongst the angels. He had a role amongst the angels. Some people misquote or misinterpret that Iblis was an angel and that God took him out of and made him something else. No, this is not true. Iblis was always a jinn. Allah says this in the Quran where Allah says, فَسَجَدَ الْمَلَائِكَةَ The angels prostrated and then he said, إِلَّا Iblis كَانَ مِنَ الْجِنِّ Except for Iblis, he was one of the jinns. فَفَسَقَ عَنْ أَمْرِ رَبِّهِ He corrupted and went astray off the command of his Lord. So what did he say? أَنَا خَيْرٌ مِّنْهُ I am better than him. You made me out of fire and you made him out of soil. And we mentioned some examples last week about some of the sahabas and the predecessors of how they dealt with this, with this feeling, with, with this feeling of, of, of proudiness and haughtiness and how they advised one another. And the letter of Abu Bakr anhu to the emperor of Rome. Now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, after the debate, Iblis telling him, by your might and power, I'm going to lead all of them astray. And Allah gives him ideas. And Iblis says ideas. And then Allah says to him, but one type of people you can't harm. They are my sincere servants. And Iblis says, إِلَّا عِبَادَكَ مِنْهُمُ الْمُخْلَصِينَ Okay, except for your sincere servants. Sincerity of the heart. Jealousy also breaks sincerity. Jealousy is of two types. Number one, the haram jealousy. And number two, the halal jealousy. As for the haram jealousy, it is when you see something materialistic in another person and you wish that you had that and that they didn't have it. You see something materialistic, worldly, with the other person and you wish that you had it and they didn't have it. A position, a status, wealth, a car, a house, whatever it is. A nice wife, a nice husband, beautiful children, whatever. That is haram jealousy. And the Prophet sallallahu said, beware of jealousy. This hadith is in Bukhari and Muslim. Beware of jealousy. Iyakum wal hasad. For jealousy burns away or eats away or erases away your good deeds just like fire burns wood. فَإِنَّ الْحَسَدَ يَأْكُلُ الْحَسَنَاتِ كَمَا تَأْكُلُ النَّارُ الْحَطَبِ That's what it means in Arabic. Jealousy does that. And it leads to kibr afterwards. To proudiness. Because when you can't get what the other person has, the next thing a human person resorts to in their bad desires is to at least degrade the other person's reputation. So when they are mentioned, they'll backbite them in a bad way. When something good about them is mentioned, they'll try to make it look ugly and bad. They'll try to make it look like nothing, degrading from other people. And this is haram. This is jealousy. As for the jealousy that's allowed, that will not lead to proudiness at all, insha'Allah, is the jealousy where another person has a certain quality which Allah loves, such as they have got knowledge in the deen, in the religion. Or Masan, for example, they might recite the Qur'an well. Or they have wealth with them that they are using to donate in the cause of God, cause of Allah. You're allowed to be jealous in the following manner. To say, I wish I had what this person had of Islamic knowledge, of recitation of the Qur'an, of wealth that he is donating. Not because, not because I don't wish it for him or her, but because I also want to do what they're doing so Allah can be pleased with me as well. So it's like this, I wish I had the wealth that this person had so that I can donate the way he or she is donating for the pleasure of Allah. I wish I had knowledge like this person had so that I can benefit in the cause of Allah as he or she is benefiting. But one condition, 
you do, never, you do not wish for the other person to lose what he or she has. So you don't say, I wish I had what they have to benefit, but I'm happy for them, for what they have, and I am proud and I'm excited on their behalf what they have. You don't wish for them to lose what they have. This is a jealousy which is Mahmud. It is praiseworthy. Iblis had failed in both of them. His jealousy resorted to proudiness and argumentation with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which led him to kufr and Allah says فَخْرُجْ مِنْهَا This is the final conclusion between the debate the, um, of the debate between Allah and Iblis. He said to him finally after Iblis said لَا غُيَنَّهُ I'm going to lead them all astray except your sincere servants Allah in the end says فَخْرُجْ مِنْهَا Now get out of it get out of it what? get out of your rank which you once, which, which was once honored. You have no longer have the role that you have among the angels. فَخْرُجْ مِنْهَا فَإِنَّكَ رَجِيمٌ You are now an outcast. You have been exiled. Similarly, for human beings, when something is clear to us from Allah, we have the, we have the knowledge about it. We understand it clearly. We know it comes from Allah and His Messenger. And then we choose, after Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warned us and gave us signs, we choose to refuse and reject, there may come a moment in a person's life, believe it or not, where a person begins deserving of being an outcast from the mercy of Allah. Allah outcasts them. One of the examples is that Allah tells us in the Quran, some people Allah yatba ala qulubihim. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala seals their hearts. When they listen to the Quran, they can no longer be moved. When they listen about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they have no affection. In fact, they will fight it. And they'll and they'll probably call themselves Muslim, but a different type of Muslim, one of their own. Their hearts have been sealed. There are people like that. Just ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He keeps your heart open. What does that mean, keep my heart open? It means, oh Allah, oh Allah, keep giving me signs that keep me the way I am on the righteous path. And oh Allah, keep giving me more. I ask you for I am on your side. Assist me, oh Allah. Turning to Allah in itself is conviction of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's lordship. He says, فَخْرُجْ مِنْهَا فَإِنَّكَ رَجِيمٌ The majority of the scholars tell us that Iblis was never in paradise to get out of it. They thought that he was in it and then he got out of it. Iblis will never enter it, they say. However, he did whisper to Adam alayhi salam and Hawa, our mother and our father. How he whispered is known to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but he managed to get to them. So the whispering is the only ability of the shaitan. Nobody is able to give an excuse that the shaitan made me do this or made me do that. We can't say that. Listen to what Allah replies in relation to that in the hereafter. Allah tells us in the Quran in several verses different ways that when a person is found guilty on the day of judgment they resort to blaming others and among the first they blame is their qareen, the shaitan that is with them. The, the devils say, he is the one that whispered, he is the one that made me do it. And the shaitan will reply the following words. He say, oh my Lord, I did not lead him astray. And he will say to that person, to them, إِنَّمَا دَعَوْتُكُمْ فَاسْتَجَبْتُمْ لِي I only invited you, and you responded to the invitation. فَلَا تَلُومُونِي Don't blame me now. وَلُومُوا أَنفُسَكُمْ Blame yourselves. In another verse, Allah says, قَالَ قَرِينُهُ رَبَّنَا مَا أَطْغَيْتُهُ The shaitan will say, My Lord, I didn't lead them astray. I didn't lead him astray. وَلَكِنْ كَانَ فِي ضَلَالٍ بَعِيدٍ He was too far away. He chose to be on the wrong path. He had bad company. He went to the bad places. He chose not to remember the Quran. He chose not to pray. And so I came in and my whispers were strong on him. It's not my fault. He was astray. He was there and all I said was, hey, do this. And he was ready to accept it. That's it. That's all it was. And another verse, he says, بمصرخي. I will not blame you and you should not blame me today. Don't call upon me. I won't call upon you. We all have our own situation. In another verse, the shaitan will say, if it's good to use this word, the, the shifty shaitan will say, إِنِّي أَخَافُ اللَّهَ رَبَّ الْعَالَمِينَ I fear Allah, the Lord of all mankind. That's what he says. I fear him. <laughs> so Allah finally says to them, قَالَ لَا تَخْتَصِمُوا لدي. Don't sit here arguing over superficial things before me. It's unjustified. 
وَقَدْ قَدَّمْتُ إِلَيْكُمْ بِالْوَعِيدِ I have given you both the warnings. Both of you enter hellfire. So there is no win-win situation in this. Now the whisper begins with Adam alayhi salam in paradise. Allah said to Adam alayhi salam and his wife, live in paradise and you may eat and drink whatever you will and wish for anything you want. You will live there, you will never be hungry, you will never be thirsty, you will, like, you will only have pleasure. We had the long series about the description of hellfire last time. And so on and so forth. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had a plan as well. And that plan had to fit within the choices as well. He said, وَلَا تَقْرَبَ هَذِهِ الشَّجَرَ فَتَكُونَ مِنَ الظَّالِمِينَ But see that tree over there? Don't eat from that tree, otherwise you will be among the wrongdoers. And you will wrong yourselves. It's not like as in the Bible, uh, there was this special tree. It wasn't actually a special tree at all. It's not like in the Bible that if they ate from the tree, uh, something terrible is going to happen to God or, or that implies or that God got angry and there's no such thing. In fact, God says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, uh, it's like saying this, you see that tree over there? Just don't eat from that one there. Just random tree. Anything. Allah is not afraid of anything. But it's something that he wanted to teach humans, mankind with. This tree, don't come near it. Both of you, both of you, the man and the woman. Not like in other religions, they accuse Hawa only and that she is the cause of man's destruction and so on. No, no. In Islam, it's not like that because Allah addresses both of them. Both of you, addressing them both. You'll be both be oppressors to yourselves. The shaitan whispers and tells him, Hey, your Lord did not prevent you both from that tree. Illa an takuna malakaini, except that you will become angels or that you will live eternity. There's a sir, there has to be a secret to that tree. There's actually no secret, boys and girls, brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen. There is no secret to that. But the shaitan knows the curiosity of human beings. We're curious. If I put ten boxes here and I took all the locks off and I told you what's in nine of the boxes and you believed me. But I told you the tenth box, I'm not going to tell you what's in there. But don't touch it, it's not good for you. What do you think you're gonna, your mind's going to tell you to do? Ten boxes. Nine boxes, I tell you, you know what's in there. I tell you, tenth box, not out of touch. You can touch any of them, but not the tenth box. It's not good for you. What's going to happen? Curiosity. So what's in that box? If I leave you long enough, someone is bound to come and try and see what's in that box. Even though there's nothing special really. There's nothing in there. So Allah wanted to show us the obedience of Allah and the trust to build the trust between us and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Adam Aisam did have that trust. But he wanted to show us some weakness in man and why we are actually here on this earth. I will leave that inshallah till next week to explain how this fits into why we are actually on earth. And we'll talk about how Adam Aisam and Hawa ate from the tree. What is it that caused them? What happened afterwards? إن شاء الله stay tuned هذا وصلى الله على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين